Welcome to Movie Rehash. Today, I am going to explain a thriller movie from 2023, titled, A Lifeguard Obsession. Watch out and take care. The film opens with a montage of lively Cocoa Beach scenes captured through stock footage, showcasing people having a good time, soaking up the sun, and reveling in the ocean waves. As the camera pans towards the horizon, we spot Tyson and Liz, a student and her coach, floating on their surfboards amidst the serene waters, and engrossed in a conversation about their illicit romance. Liz's apprehension is palpable as she confides in Tyson about her possessive and unhinged ex-partner, whom she suspects might be stalking them in the middle of the ocean. Her fear comes true when someone pulls them in the water, and they both sink. Is this murdered or something? Six months have passed, and we see a girl named, Maggie. She returns at works after the beach closed down due to the shark attack. Suddenly, her boss, AJ appears there to divulge some information, including the fact that Maggie is currently dating a remarkably attractive influencer named, Cade Kerrigan. Maggie also has not been surfing since the shark attack, but she decides to go for it. She goes near the beach and starts surfing. While she is surfing, a lifeguard named, Blake Hopkins watches her from his guard tower. Maggie, who is surfing, suddenly falls into the water due to her injured knee. Then, Blake rushes to save her and creepily swims up behind her under the water. After this, he takes Maggie out the water and comforts her. On the other side of the beach, we see a handsome boy named, Cade, a social media influencer who is Maggie's boyfriend, hanging on social media, and he is totally unknown that Maggie is injured in the sea while surfing. Then, a girl named, Tina, his lifeguard partner comes there, and tells him to go for a lunch, but Cade says wait for 30 minutes. While they are talking, it is announced on the tower that Maggie is injured. Hearing this, Cade and his lifeguard partner, Tina go to see Maggie if she is okay. Cade gets there and pushes Blake, saying that she is my girlfriend, don't touch her. Cade hugs her and Blake watches them rudely. After this, they go inside and Cade makes hot tea for Maggie. He storms at Maggie, saying her knee is not ready for surfing. She stops him and tells him that his job is lifeguard not a social media influencer. Actually, she is not happy about his job as Cade hangs out all the time in internet, so she wants him to be a lifeguard. When they are arguing, Blake appears there and they introduce with each other. Maggie says thanks to him and he replies that it is part of my life. The next day, Blake and Maggie meet again. Blake seizes the opportunity and gives Maggie a gift to help her injured knee. After that, they go for a walk, and Blake gets to know more about Maggie. She talks about her seashell collages, and Blake is familiar with her. Cade sees both of them at the beach, when Blake is looking at Maggie's shell, and Cade gets jealous. He goes near them and pushes Blake but Maggie makes him relaxed. The next day, Cade says sorry to Maggie for the last day incident as he pushed Blake. Maggie tells Cade that they should take a break, and she angrily gets out of the car. Blake is exercising around Maggie's place, pretending he does not know she lives there. Maggie comes, ready to go to the art gallery. She sees him there and thanks as her knee is completely healed and they both head to the art gallery. On the other side, Kate is upset due to his breakup with Maggie. Hina approaches him and taking this opportunity, she starts to come close to him. At the art gallery, Maggie sees everything is trashed and she wondered who did it. Actually, Blake breaks into the gallery and trashes the place so that Sam, the art gallery owner will give Maggie an art exhibit. His plan works, and Maggie is thrilled after getting exhibit, and she hugs with Blake. Hina sees all this and she tells Kate about it. Blake helps Maggie set up the art gallery room. That night, they both go to the pool to cool off after a hard day's work. He takes off his clothes and we see stopwatch which is belongs to Liz, a girl who is seen at the start of the movie. He jumps on the water and urges Maggie to join with him. He closes his eyes and Maggie also starts to take off the clothes. Then, she also joins with him, where they share a romantic kiss and fall asleep on the pool deck. The next morning, the maintenance man almost finds them. But luckily, they manage to hide inside the wall. After the man leaves, they both laugh it off. They go to the room and Maggie checks her phone and sees that Kate had called her many times. When she is about to answer the call, Blake gets angry and tells her not to answer the call. And this is the time when she notices another side of him. However, at the end, she responds Cade call. Cade tells her that he misses her, and asks her to come inside, but she refuses as Blake is there. After this, AJ, the boss, catches Blake while he is working, and asks Blake if he is looking Maggie. Suddenly he notices Blake's t-shirt, where Mackie's is written, which is only found in Cocoa Beach. AJ asks if he is has been there. Blake says no. Then, Blake pushes him, saying he asks a lot of questions, which gets him in trouble. After this, AJ becomes suspicious about him and Google Cocoa Beach, and found that he had been there, and his real name is not Blake, but Ryan. 
he also looks up a story about a woman and boyfriend murdered. After knowing everything about Blake, he follows him in the beach. AJ threatens him to tell everything about him to Maggie but Blake kills him. The art gallery exhibit opens and is a huge success. Maggie, thanks everyone for coming. While she is busy with people, she sees Kate is also present there. Kate asks her for second chance and needs to talk to her. But, Blake becomes furious about his pardon and they both ends up fighting. Seeing both of them fighting, Maggie kicks both of them out of the gallery. Black goes to an abandoned house and hulks out, punching walls and screaming. That day, after finishing shift, Tina takes a short shower in a creepy locker room. Blake sneaks in and steals her cell phone, and he sends her sexy pictures to Cade from her phone. He rushes by Tina, but he drops the stopwatch. Tina knows Blake is the culprit. The next day, Maggie and Cade meet at the restaurant, where Cade begs for second chance. Maggie gives him a second chance, and they talk. When they are talking, Cade is interrupted by screaming fans, asking for photo, as he is a social media influencer, he has lots of fan following. Maggie encourages him to take picture with his fans and runs after them, leaving his phone on the table. When Kate is taking picture with his fans, his phone rings and Maggie checks it, and finds Tina's sexy photos. Maggie feels betrayed and foolish for giving Kate a second chance. She again starts fighting with him and leaves from there in frustration. Kate goes to Tina and tells her why she sent those pictures? Tina tells him that she did not send that picture, and also tells him that her phone was stolen this morning. After this, she shows that Stopwatch and Kate understand that Blake sent those pictures. Tina goes to the bar and tries to explain what happened to Maggie. She doesn't hear what Tina is saying at first. Then she sees the Stopwatch and realizes that Blake is behind everything and stalking her. Later, Maggie confronts Blake and gives him back the Stopwatch, and tells him that she appreciates everything that he had done for her. He tells her that he is in love with her but she says she has never been in love with him. Hearing this, he becomes angry and crushes his stopwatch with his bare hands, because she tells him to leave her alone. Later that day, Kate gets a text message from Tina, saying Maggie is waiting for him at an old abandoned shack. He goes there and calls Maggie. Maggie tells him that she did not see Tina for an hour and did not tell anything to meet with him. Kate understands that it was Blake who called him. Shortly after, Blake appears from the back and stabs him with a knife and kills Kate. Later, AJ's dead body found near the beach. Tina and Maggie realize that they are in danger. Tina distracts Blake so Maggie can look for clues to the old shack. But when Tina is looking lifeguard safety box, Blake injects Tina from the back and he leaves Tina in the middle of the ocean to drown. Thankfully the woman is a lifeguard and swims to shore to get help. Meanwhile, Maggie finds a journal of Blake's that has news clippings and pictures of her. Before she can tell anyone, Blake chokes her out. Maggie wakes up and finds herself tied up in the old house. Maggie cries and tells Blake that he cannot escape what he has done. Blake says that saving her life saved him. He is obsessed with her. Then Maggie uses the old trick that she wants to go to the bathroom and finds Cade's body in the shower. She is about to scream, but then Maggie hears Tina call for her help. She rushes to help and finds Blake is holding a knife to Tina's neck, and he beats with knife, making Tina unconsciously laying in the ground. When he is about to kill Tina, Maggie grabs something and knocks him out. Maggie tries to rush to get help, but her knee is acting up. Blake runs after her, and she grabs a shell and stabs him in the neck with IT. Blake manages to get away before the police can arrive, and Maggie tries to move on with her life. She starts to surf again. Six months later, Blake is in Florida where he is a lifeguard in another beach town, obsessing over another woman. In this way, movie ends here. At the end, I want to request my respected viewers to subscribe my channel and help us to grow.